Uh, the scripture today is from Luke chapter 6, verses 24 to 26, on page 64 in the New Testament, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you all speak well of you, when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Also, uh, we're reading this morning Psalm 46, 1 through 3. It's on page 17 in the Old Testament in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. God's defense of his city and people. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through the earth should change, through the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, through its waters roar and foam, through the mountains tremble, tremble with its tumult. Thank you. The word of God for the people of God. Good God. So a phone rang on a Sunday morning in September of 1959. And it broke into the, the joyful chaos that is life with five children between the age of three and 13. It was a phone call she knew was coming, but that fact never does prepare one fully for that reality that was about to occur. It was the phone call that told her that her beloved husband, her soulmate, the father of her children, was dead at the age of 38. The brain tumor that had taken his health and vitality and had begun to take his personality had now taken his life. It was the summer of 1972. And breaking into the silence of an empty nest, the phone rang again. She thought it might be one of her kids calling or perhaps her surgeon husband calling to say he was on his way home, but instead... It was the phone call that told her that those swollen lymph nodes she had noticed were not the lingering effects of a winter cold. They were cancer. It's a cold January morning in 1990. A farmhouse kitchen. The phone rings. The nurse on the other end confirmed what she knew already in her heart. Her husband of 27 years had died in the night. His body had given out. The cancer that had spread throughout his body and sent him into a coma had taken his life. It's 2003. The portable phone on the end table next to the couch rang on a fall afternoon. It interrupted the quiet solitude of an afternoon spent knitting and reading. It was her doctor on the line. The biopsy results were back. She had lymphoma. Those four phone calls all came to the same woman. She was the grandmother of a pastor friend of mine. And each time she hung up the phone, she had a choice. When she lost her children or had to endure the pain of watching her own children or grandchildren suffer... She had a choice. Her choice was to let that piece of news, that painful, horrible loss, be the defining event of her life or to look around and be grateful. If she chose the former, it would be the lens through which she viewed the world and she would let tragedy define her. It would be a lens that would be a source of stress and worry. It would be an approach that would mean she would always be waiting for that other shoe to drop. It was an approach that would not add hours to her lifespan, but would instead diminish the quality of her life. But if she chose the latter, if she chose gratitude, then she could celebrate the life and joys of her children and grandchildren. She could be an active and involved mother who continued to play tennis and take her children to the lake in the summer. She could marry again and spend the happy years of her husband's retirement living on a farm in Maine. 
She could be the host for her grandchildren for countless summers, reading to them, teaching them about the farm and about their own family history. She could be a great-grandmother who moves to an apartment in the city to be nearer to her family and to be able to watch her great-grandchildren learn to walk. The woman on the receiving end of these phone calls died in the spring of 2013 at the age of 92. She was a woman who dealt with a significant amount of personal tragedy and a woman who chose to let her life be defined by its many blessings rather than its tragic losses. Today is All Saints Remembrance Day. It's a day on which we remember those that we have lost, those who have been saints in our lives and in our faith, those who have been examples and inspirations on our own faith journeys. In Luke 6, which is where our gospel lesson comes from this morning, Luke tells us that those who are poor and hungry or mourning are actually blessed because they will be provided for and comforted. And Luke tells us not to fight back when we're persecuted, but rather to overcome challenges with kindness and gentleness. And in that Luke 6, we also have that classic passage that reminds us to turn the other cheek if we're struck. Now, I've often thought about these passages as about being about direct confrontation, about the times when we are physically harmed by another person. But in reflecting on these passages in light of that wonderful grandmother's life, I realize that they can be taken on a more metaphorical level. You see, they're not just about the times in our lives when we have been persecuted or confronted by another human being. They are about the times in our lives when we have faced significant challenges, when we have struggled, when we have lost someone. Friends, we can be blessed in the midst of our pain. We can, in fact, overcome challenges with kindness and generosity. But let me be clear. This doesn't happen by itself. It requires action on our part. It is a choice that we make, just like that grandmother did. It is a choice we make to either let our lives be defined by what is missing, by the pain we've suffered and what we've lost, or to allow our lives to be defined by blessings by the gifts and the sources of joy that we have all around us. Now, being blessed does not automatically happen. It's sort of like forgiveness. It's freely offered by God, but it only has meaning in our lives if we accept it and live with gratitude for the gifts that we've been given. Now, I am sure that we all know people who have had moments of choosing loss, choosing pain. Perhaps we have all had those times when we preferred to sort of stay stuck in our own misery and discomfort because at least they are familiar and make us feel more in control. We've had those times when hurt and anger have gotten the better of us. We've had those times when we feel that God or the world owes us because it is entirely unfair that we should have to suffer. But the issue ultimately is, is not whether or not we have moments of being focused on our pain or our anger. We have a right to be angry. We have a right to cry out in pain when we suffer. I mean, the reality is sometimes life is horribly unfair. Can I get an amen to that? We lose jobs. We fail tests in school. Beloved young people die far before their time. And our bodies, these wonderfully made bodies, they begin to give out. We are faced with illnesses and our own mortality. Friends, sometimes life is just plain hard. 
And it's okay to be angry and it's okay to be sad. The issue is this though. It's whether or not we stay in that place. Whether or not we choose to let our anger and our pain get the best of us. The issue is whether we choose to let those those emotions blind us to all of the gifts and the blessings that are right around us in our lives. It's a choice we make. This is why I'm so grateful for the incredible woman in this opening story and her amazing example of faith. She faced a tremendous amount of loss and challenge in her life, but she never let them define her. Nor did she expect her life to go perfectly or to be devoid of suffering. But those who do let loss define them, those who expect that life should just go swimmingly, are the ones who are warned in Luke's gospel for today. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. We will face challenges. We will face difficulties in the course of our lives. And it's best to come to grips with that fact and not live with the presumption that things in our life are always going to go remarkably well. You see, we will not always be full or laughing or spoken well of. But that does not mean that our lives will be overwhelmed by pain or challenge. You see, we are people of faith. We believe in resurrection. We believe that the love of God is stronger than anything else in the world, even death. As the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. You see, as people of faith, we can choose to trust God. We can choose to seek out our blessings. We can choose to live with gratitude. We can choose to follow the example of all the saints in our lives, all of those who have been examples of strength and hope to us. By choosing to define our lives by joy and blessing rather than pain and loss. Friends, the challenges will come. And it is by holding fast to our faith, to our hope, to the ever-present reality of love and blessings in our lives that we will be able to overcome those challenges. In this world we live in, This world needs more people whose lives are not defined by pain and loss, but by love and blessing. The world surely needs more blessing. So let us give thanks this day for all those in our lives who have showed us what it is to bless the world with our lives. And I hope for each and every one of us that we will go forth and we will do likewise. That each of you will be a source of life and blessing and hope to those that you encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.